Hi, everyone. Welcome to Retire with Style. I'm Wade, and I'm joined by my co-host, Alex. And we interrupt the tax planning arc this week to bring you a very special podcast with a, a very special guest, Dan Vito, uh, the founder and managing partner of RetireSpark, who will be doing a webinar for the retirement researcher community that everyone is invited to. That webinar will be on November 19th at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and it's called The Holiday Season, Making Memories and Awkward Money Moments. And we wanted to bring Dan into the podcast to have a conversation to help set up what that webinar is going to be all about, as well as have a, a really detailed conversation with the holiday season coming up. We're just around the corner at this point from Thanksgiving, and then, of course, the end of the year, Christmas and everything else that goes with that. A lot of family uh, opportunities to gather together and an opportunity for great family memories, but at the same time, there can be awkward money conversations. And, and Dan's built a lot of experience in his career uh, understanding these types of issues. So Dan, we're really excited to, to bring you into the show today. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Alex. It's uh, it's great to be back. Um, you know, I, if I'm recalling correctly, I was one of the first dozen guests in the, this uh, uh, great podcast of yours. And so I'm, I'm happy to be back. And and just to remind folks, just give me, I'll give you kind of 30 seconds on me. Oh, yeah. Um, my sort of modest uh, professional goal is to uh, help improve the retirement er outlook of every single American. Uh, so you guys uh, and the work that you do is incredibly important. You reach a lot of folks. And so I'm, I'm always happy to team up with you guys um, and share some of what I know uh, to your listeners and, and uh, the people uh, at the webinar next week. So delighted, delighted to be here. Um, oh, our yeah, pleasure. Our pleasure. Thank you. So I want so, to open this up. Go ahead. Well, well yeah, I mean, to, to get this started, I, we're talking about money conversations uh, that may come up during the holiday season. And a, a term that you coined is the family bank. So I think a great place to start is to really just talk about what you mean by that concept. Yeah. Yeah. For, you know, for many years, I worked with uh, Ken Dykewald and his team over at AgeWave doing some really groundbreaking retirement research. And at some point, uh, someone on the team coined this phrase, the family bank, and it, and it sort of caught on. And it describes the person. And for some folks, this is going to resonate with you immediately, right? So if you're the kind of person, <clears throat> you've worked really hard, uh, you've saved as much as you can, you've invested prudently, you've been blessed with some you know, measure of financial success, um, other members of your family may look at you as sort of the family banker, right? So like you, because of your hard work and savings and smart financial smarts, people turn to you for maybe financial advice and sometimes for money. And so um, you operate this thing, whether you realize it or not, called the family bank. And the family bank is pretty unique among financial institutions. Uh, it's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's open on weekends, including Sundays. And it's even open on Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. I mean, it, it's just amazing, right? Um, what's the ticker? About, sorry? <laughs> what's the ticker? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sell it short. <laughs> the, um, the other thing about the family bank is underwriting standards are typically very, very loose, right? The terms are extremely flexible and there's no collections department, right? So um, one thing I like to just caution people up front, um, if this is their first time in this sort of place, is even though you think you're giving a family member a loan, you should probably think about it as a gift, right? And, and, and even if, uh, because, Unless you're willing to take, you know, your brother-in-law to court, you have you have very little recourse. Um, and many, many family, while many family loans are repaid, uh, you know, in good faith, many are not. And so you just need to be financially fully prepared for that possible outcome. Um, and of course, the other thing is, um, if you end up becoming known as you know the family bank and it's really easy to get money and you never have to repay, then you transition from being the family bank to being the family <laughs> ATM, <laughs> right? So, and that can have financial consequences that probably aren't particularly good for you or for the rest of your family. 
So um, I just pause for a second and see. I, I don't I don't know if either of you feel like you're uh, the family banker yet, or you know people, or this kind of makes any sense. Uh, I, wait. Well, I have a relatively small family, so I like even my children don't even have any second cousins. <laughs> I, I have a first cousin. <laughs> So no, I don't have this experience really directly myself. Well, you're lucky. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I have my own litmus test. I normal family, extended family, I would imagine. Uh, I know that I'm lending out too much money when I walk in a room, <laughs> and everyone laughs at everything that I say right after because I know, as as evidenced by this podcast, I'm not that funny. <laughs> and so if all of a sudden, yeah. Dan, do I owe you money? Up. Come to think of right. it, or do you owe me money? Come to think of it. <laughs> no, That's no, I, I, I can see this becoming an issue, especially during this time of year. And yeah, I there's there's a couple of things that while you were saying that, what I'm thinking is mm -hmm. not necessary. There's two types of money thing, and I would imagine you're going to mm -hmm. touch upon this: is asking for money because I've got a new business venture, you know, right? And yeah. it's it's not a pyramid scheme. It's multi-level marketing, you know, that, that kind of stuff. <laughs> or, right. Oh, or drop shipping or, or right. refactoring or, or you know, right. that kind of, there's that, or someone wants to start another pizza restaurant or taco restaurant or right. whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, there's that money, which, you know, it could be valid if it's a the standard business, but there's some gimmicky kind of businesses too. Right. Yeah. And then there's, I need an operation. Or, you know, something that's like almost critical, almost like you say, I don't care. You know, it's right. a family obligation yep. kind of thing. And then there's another level, which is, you know, this guy's my whatever, and he's a 10 time loser. But you mm -hmm. know what? Uh, uh, you know, I, I got to help him out because if not, he's going to be homeless. Right, right. No, you, you are see, there's three uh, different things there, right? Yeah, the, the, the landscape is highly textured. Um, and you're right. We're going to talk about all those cases and and even more. Um, one thing I should mention maybe up front is that we are not we're really talking about, let's say, relative for, for the purposes of today's podcast. Um, we'd like, we'll probably limit our scope to something that is uh, limited in terms of a dollar dollar amount. Right. And and we're certainly not. There's a whole approach to estate planning where lending, uh, you know, formal large dollar lending can be an effective way to transfer assets from one party to another. We're not talking about that. Um, and in terms of dollar amounts, it's, it's interesting because, you know, there is this threshold. Most people don't know this. Um, there's this threshold of $10,000. And, um, you know, I am not an accountant or tax planner. So talk to your tax planner and all those disclosures. But Generally speaking, if you make a family a loan to a family member for under ten thousand dollars, the IRS basically doesn't care. Um, but if you go beyond that, uh, you if you want it to be an official loan, you need to document it. Um, you need to collect interest, uh, and if you don't collect uh, interest, uh, there's there's a certain rate you're meant to uh, a minimum rate you have to charge. It's called the AFR, the applicable uh, federal rate. Right now, it depends a little bit on the, the length of the term and all that kind of stuff, but it's about 4%. Um, and if you choose not to charge interest uh, at the AFR, you need to claim, uh, you're, you're going to have an imputed interest income uh, that you'll have to claim on your income taxes, whether you collect it or not. And unless okay. you follow all the, all the rules, the IRS will consider it a gift. So there, there is sort of this threshold. And of course, 10000 is below the currently $18,000 a year you can give someone, uh, it'll be $19,000 next year. But, you know, there's this relatively, I mean, $10,000 is a lot of money, uh, but it's not, you know, tens of thousands that you can just loan a family member without wading into, uh, you know, all the right tax forms and um, being sure you document it all. So um, that's, it's an interesting threshold just to be aware of. Uh, there, there's one other loophole. Um, I don't want to get into too much of the weeds, but uh, the second threshold is at 100,000, and if the recipient has less than a thousand dollars in earned 
uh, income, uh, interest income. Uh, you can, um, well, your earned income, I guess, you can um, loan them a higher dollar amount. But again, it's getting probably a little beyond the scope of. Uh, sure. But, well, and so, so in general, this is not the all encompassing money exchanges hands to family members 101. This right. is more, hey, you're going to Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. You know, What's, if you get hit up or, uh, yeah, my car is need, I need it $500 to repair my car. If not, I can't go to work. And if I can't go to work, it's going to yeah. snowball into a vicious cycle. Yeah. What do you do? Exactly. It's more those kind of conversations that you're talking about. That that's our the point of today. Yeah. Someday we'll maybe have a discussion on the, you know, the broader, the broader topic. Sure, sure. Um, and, and it's interesting, you know, so one question people sometimes ask is, well, you know, why would you turn to a family member for money? Right. Um, and in the cases that I've examined, I mean, you know, basically we tend to do the thing that is easiest, right? So at the end of the day, if you're being asked for money, um, it's because you are seen as an easier source of money. Um, by the way, in some cases you may, they may not be able to secure money from a, from an external source, from an institutional source, because they don't can't meet the, the the requirements, right? So this goes back to that that piece about the underwriting, right? Like I can ask you for anything. Um, and another aspect is that you know a lot of times people feel like, well, the terms will be easier, right? Somehow, well, I'll pay when I can, and if I miss a payment, it's probably not that big of a deal. Um, and that goes to you know just that it feels less formal. Um, and then, um, also some people, you know, it might be like, well, they may be right. They may be wrong. They may be like, well, you've got enough money. You kind of won't miss it. <laughs> you know, if I uh, am slow in paying it or if I don't pay it back, uh, and that goes to sort of the, the notion of no collections. So, um, a whole bunch of reasons. On that, on that point too, just why is it happening at the family holiday dinner? Is it partly just the, or like maybe multiple answers, but the convenience of yeah. you'll actually see this person and therefore you just take advantage of that opportunity? Or is there an element of peer pressure with yeah. getting other family members on your side to have this person yeah. give you the money? You know, it can- The eggnog runneth over. <laughs> <laughs> it can be easy. A lot of times, you know, it, it depends on the family dynamic. So if you're in touch with your family members all the time, then it may can't come up in a different sort of environment. But if you're seeing your, you know, your father-in-law or your cousins or your whatever only a few times, it becomes super awkward to reach out on an independent basis. So holidays are this, this gathering. Um, we're expected to make conversation with each other. You know, you kind of pull somebody aside. It is, um, See, I don't say an easy, but almost like a natural venue uh, for these conversations to occur. Yeah. And, wait, um, wait, even intuitively, and this is just thinking out loud, but okay, if, if you never speak with your uncle, or you, not that you never speak with but there's something wrong, but you don't have an occasion to speak with your uncle during the year. And all of a sudden you call him out of the blue and say, hey, Johnny, what's up, man? I was thinking about you. <laughs> you still have that shoe. You still have those shoes that I liked in the last Thanksgiving. Do you remember what brand they were? Oh, by the way, can you lend me money so I can buy it? You know what I mean? Like it, 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 it doesn't work, right? Whereas in Thanksgiving, you could, oh my God, that stuffing was incredible. And then, you, you know, everyone's feeling nice and he's, he's more probably capable or she's more capable to throw you a bone if you're asking yeah. for three, 400 bucks. Again, I'm just making that up, but it seems reasonable, right? Yeah, the opportunity to, and you made the joke about eggnog, but yeah, that may be another <laughs> element. It's just easier to get Well, that's from that. experience, actually. That's not, no. <laughs> <laughs> what were those shoes? <laughs> <laughs> you know, asking about the shoes is sort of the equivalent of laughing when, you know, when you tell a joke in the room, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so then you'd say, okay, um, it presents this opportunity, you know, why, why do people give money to family members? And this is a really interesting topic because in my estimation, there's sort of this emotional tango that happens. Um, and the primary emotions for mo in most cases are love and guilt. 
and they're not typically in equal measures, right? So when a grandchild asks a grandparent um, for money for any reasons, it's out of love, you know, oh, you know, the love emotion kicks. I do anything for my grandkids, right? Be having grandkids is the greatest thing in the world. And, you know, um, anything, anything, anything. Whereas if my, hmm, my sibling who I don't maybe agree with his or her lifestyle choices all the time asks for me for money, um, maybe it's about love. I mean, there, hopefully there's some, <laughs> there's some love there, but it might also be about guilt, right? Like, okay, I've been lucky you know, things have worked out well for me and boy, he's had a couple of really hard breaks and, you know, I just I never went to like your I... confirmation. <laughs> What's that? I never went to your confirmation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, there are, there's this mixture of emotions and love and guilt are incredibly strong emotions that will cause us to do all kinds of things. Forget about just money, right? And make, <laughs> making a loan to a family member. Um, but those emotions come into play um, in these situations as well. Um, and then beyond I, love and guilt. Go ahead, Alex. No, finish your thought. There, there's finish another you. topic within that, but I'm curious what your thoughts on, but you have a, a stream of conscious. So just- Yeah, uh, I'll just add it. this and then you can chime in, which is-, which yeah. is it's not j love and guilt are the two big pieces and they kind of dance around each other. But then there's this whole other secondary level of emotions and feelings, things like pride, right? Ego. Um, you know, I feel important because I can make this loan. Um, things, uh, desire for affection, right? I want to win the affection maybe of the recipient, um, maybe of my mother, because I'm gonna loan money to my sibling. Uh, it can give the, the lender a feeling of strength, right? Like I'm, I'm the family provider, I'm the place of refuge. Um, and sometimes there are some darker emotions that come into play, um, a desire for some measure of control or influence into a relationship that I might not, other ha might not otherwise have. So a whole kind of, swirling morass of emotions are involved uh, in this could be a similarly simple request, you know, um, as you said, Alex, you know, can you spot me 500 bucks or geez, you know, my credit card bills are out of debt. I'm $5,000 in debt. I'd love to just pay them all off and start fresh or whatever. A whole bunch of things come into play. It, it, you're right. But I, I would say, is, is there an added thing here? And it's funny, you said guilt and love. And Wade, when he said guilt and love, I was, I, I you know what I, it reminded me of? Uh, remember that Netflix show, uh, Giri Haji, something like that, the the Japanese one. Hmm. I think I recall you recommending it to me, but I've never. It's a great show. It, it's a great. It's a great. <laughs> and I'm going somewhere with this, Dan. It's a great yeah. show on, on Netflix. It's it's almost like a, uh, a, a near noir kind of. Uh, crime movie but it, it's a japanese based uh series it's it's fantastic wait mm. but I, I believe i asked what that meant and i have to look it up it, it means duty and shame mm. oh interesting and you know and, and now where i'm going with this is i'm curious if there's mm. cultural components to this because mm -hmm. i'm gonna assume maybe correctly or incorrectly you're giving me the world view of the american kind yeah. of lending money thing you know, and there's yeah. certain boundaries and, and where maybe different cultures, you know, you have this like duty, you have a family duty, Yeah. you know, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. irrelevant if I have like, uh, the, the brother that, you know, like, you know, Billy Carter, if you will, you know, <laughs> kind of thing, right. You know, right. uh, right. you still have to take care of them. And yeah. so, and I say this for me. I'm born and raised in Miami, very different than, you know, the, the traditional Cuban American guy in Miami, very different than Wade in the Midwest and most likely very different than you. And there was a clear different money conversation mm -hmm. for me and my family where everything is really enmeshed. And yeah. you could even say it's not healthy, you know, to an outside person, it's, 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 it's fairly reasonable for them to say that's not healthy. <laughs> you know, or it's not, you know, that kind of thing. And that's fine. Right. Reasonable people can differ and we can talk about it. No problem at all. But it's very enmeshed. And even it, 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 it bleed, it bled out to our friends conversation. What I mean by that is yeah. my friends in my twenties and thirties and forties, 
they know how much we make. They know how much our house is worth, that kind of thing. And it's just kind of a casual conversation thing where that stuff is my wife, Japanese American, but she's for the most part grew up in Bethesda, raised here, doesn't speak Japanese. Her parents don't speak Japanese, but her grandparents and stuff like that were interned and stuff like that. So they, you know, they, they still have strong cultural relevance. Right. Right. But their money is not spoken about. It's just not discussed. Right. And so, I'm curious if that I, I think the answer is yes, but I, I'm I'm curious if if there's any color to add to that added dynamic across cultures, perhaps as well. Yeah. Now you're raising a really interesting dynamic. And yeah, I, I so I, I'm gonna make two points. One is about the US and then one is outside the US. Um within the US, we have become a culture that talks about almost everything. Right. Like, you know, old people talk about all their ailments and all their procedures and young people talk about their girlfriends and boyfriends and what they do with each other. And the one area for most Americans that is still off limits is is money. And and interestingly, not so much about credit, like your credit score, people can talk about, but how much money you have and how much money you make for most segments of American society are is it's still pretty much completely off limits. Um, yeah, it's it's really interesting. It's interesting that you mentioned, you know, in your uh, where you are with the Cuban American community, you share that 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 is highly, I would say, highly unusual uh, within the U.S. Now that could be a sample of my friends, and maybe that's that's a, a, a skewed thing, but I, it's it's fairly it's weird, and it was the biggest shock when my wife came down to visit, or when I it was like it's just not. Oh, you she must have been like, right? what is going on? <laughs> it's very, yeah. it's very gauche. It's very gauche. <laughs> no, yeah, but no, it's, it's, it's not done. Uh, it's just like one of the, hey, how much was this car? Like, it's a common right. thing. How much you pay for this right. car? Exactly. You know, and then how much was this house? And then uh, whatever. <laughs> and Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. And it's not done. To, it, I, maybe it's done to keep score in the back, back, back recesses of your mind. But it's really more just conversational kind of yeah. thing that's it's like it's accepted in a weird way and so i would think cultures like that it's probably a little easier too to bring up in yeah, family things think. but i don't know yeah. I'm, I, again I, yeah well i'll, I'll add i one studied more thing the reason not not lending money <laughs> <laughs> i'll add one more thing to your to what you said you know the unfortunate now i'm not advocating people should share all their financial details with you know their casual acquaintances but one of the secondary effects of really not talking about, let's just say our retirement savings, is that we observe our neighbors and people who are have kind of the same station in life as we do. And we see they're driving a newer car and their house is better furnished and their, you know, their handbag is more expensive and all that kind of stuff. And what we don't see is what's left, right? And so we feel there, there's sort of like a, a financial peer pressure to spend at the same rate as people uh, around us who we think kind of maybe make similar amount of money and what's wrong with us. Um, I've often thought, you know, if we somehow, if we like, we wore badges, we, you know, if, if you have so much in retirement savings, you get like a gold star you can wear or, a, you know, some sort of like little certificate you could hang up on your wall, you know, that could sort Wait. of. Wade does. Right, it's like, called his designer shirts. Wade's designer shirts. I, I can't keep up, Dan. Every week there's a new shirt. There's a new three hundred dollar shirt. I can't do this anymore. This man is nonstop. His sartorialist, his, his sartorialist impulses are impossible to keep up with. <laughs> if you're not watching it's this good. on YouTube, you know that <laughs> we usually have the same shirt week after week. Pretty good. But right, but right, we only see what people spend. We don't see how much they save. And because we don't talk about it in most instances, we don't know. Um, yeah, so yeah, anyway, that's on, on the U.S. side. The comment I want to make about, uh, it's a, an example outside the U.S., there's this incredible phenomenon uh, happening in China, right? So in China, there is this, you, you mentioned the word duty, uh, you know, like, like many. I was going to say people, communism, but, but that's another yeah. topic. <laughs> well, there's that too. <laughs> um, and it's true to a slightly lesser extent. Well, although it's it's true in Japan as well. Um, but in 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 China, the transition has been amazing because due to the one child rule, the whole demographic makeup of the country 
has changed in basically one generation what it took Europe multiple generations to do, right? So, uh, and and what's happening now is um, there's one child uh, that feels duty bound to support, you know, two parents, okay, uh, four grandparents, um, and it's it's not the way it used to be, right? If you have multiple children, uh, a large young population, you can, you have the time, you have the money, uh, and you can share the burden across multiple family members. But if you are, you know, <laughs> you're the only child in this demographic funnel, that becomes difficult. And um, I, I'm not, completely current on it. But I know that for a time there, there was sort of like a little bit of a rebellious movement that like, hey, you know, what's going on here? And, you know, that'll sort itself out. But it's, um, it'll be something to watch for sure. Um, You're talking and, about China? Uh, uh, the sort of China. what happens? Yeah. Every, one yeah. child is carrying the weight when you usually be, it would usually be three or four or, or whatnot. Sure. Well, you, you know, take the US or, you know, I mean, in most developed countries, the number of children has been decreasing. But, you know, where I don't know what we are now, 2.3 kids per family or whatever it might be, but um, it's not one, right? And um, <clears throat> and so it's just, that is sort of an example of the extreme. Uh, I don't think, you know, we're not on track to get there, but um, it's interesting, right? Uh, how does the family resolve that situation? And again, it's not just about money, although that's important. It's also just about time, right? How, do, how does one person take care of six adults um, or, you know, four grandparents. And, and in-laws. Yeah, yeah, it's right. Or as a couple, right. You have, uh, you have that too. So it's, it's interesting, right? I mean, traditionally uh, the family tree grew and, and you had more and more, but um, it, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right. So then we're at the, we're getting ready to get the, What's it called? The sweet potatoes, the big sweet potatoes with uh, marshmallows <laughs> caramelized on Indian. top. And someone always decides to put nuts in those things when it's fine without it. But so be it. Right. What happens? With you, no nuts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're yeah. in the line. Someone like says, hey, Johnny. Yeah. And, 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 and part of that, there's probably a first time this happens. But then if, if yeah. you become the person that gets asked, there's repeated times. And, and so, yeah, what happens in terms of how to best... Yes. Navigate those conversations. That is an excellent point, Wade. Um, and I always say uh, some of the best advice I ever got as, a, as a, a dog owner and as a new parent, it's about the same advice I, I share with people <laughs> whenever I get the chance. It is only start what you intend to continue. Right. So, <laughs> you know, if, if you loan money to Emma, right? Your grand, you know, your granddaughter, Emma, what are you going to say when the request comes from Noah, your grandson, right? Yeah. And, you know, oh, it's great. You know, first grandchild, I'm going to open up a 529 and I'm going to, I'm going to fund the heck out of it so that, you know, when brilliant Emma grows up, she can go to Harvard and not have to worry about tuition. Okay. That's great. That's your first grandchild, <laughs> right? What if you have two? or three, or six, or eight, or 10, right? So be, I, what, right? be cautious and think about the long-term request. But or there's a little nuanced difference in what you, in that. It, it's, it, to me, if you're college funding, a grandparent mm -hmm. is college funding, I, I see that different than I need money to yeah. repair a car. Yes. Kind of thing. Because you can make the case college funding is an investment and that's almost like something they want to do from a planning perspective as opposed to like yeah. an impulse ask or a money pit kind of ask. Yes. You follow? Totally follow. It's a, it's a totally different sort of use case. But the principle applies so, because sometimes yeah. people think like within a family, you think something's private. Like, oh, you know, let's say Wade and I are related. Hey, Wade, you know, OK, I know you need a thousand bucks to get the muffler flicks fixed or whatever. Here's a thousand bucks. Don't tell anybody. And you think that's going to be like not discovered by our sister. It will never happen. Right. So now when my sister's muffler goes and she asks me, she may or may not tell me that she knows, but 
somehow it came out because yeah. Wade's Wade's wife said something she didn't know she wasn't supposed to say, and you know there. There are few. True Wade's not family. doing donuts when he leaves the driveway, and that never happened before with a broken muffler. <laughs> right. right, right. So, so regardless of the use case, and we'll get into you know of the case, we'll get into different cases. Um, the same principle applies, right? So, when you start something, and, and you know, it's not like it's a hard like yes, you can always change your mind, but it's pretty tough, right? Like if I if I help you out. How do I justify? Yeah, then it's an equality. Then it's yeah. an equality question. Right. And you're and not being oh, even playing... handed. You're perceived as a plain favorites. And exactly. guess what? What started off good, you're now the bad guy. Something like that. Exactly. Exactly. So be very careful. Um, there was a nuance to what you said though at the beginning, and I just want to make sure. Because it, it, it's the other phrase. If you land it, just expect to lose it and, and you'd be done with it. Right. Don't expect to get it back. But you said it the other way. You don't expect to stop or something like that. Now... When you said that, I thought of the person coming back asking for more. You meant yeah. it more like now you're oh. the mark. And now yes. that you're the mark, everyone's going to hit you up. There's a nuance, right? right? So yes. what about the guy, the person that asked you for money? It's 500 bucks. Yeah, if you get it back, yeah. great, but you're not asking for it back. And let's say you don't get it back. And six months later, I need another 500 bucks from the same yeah. person. That's yep. a different use case. That, that is totally different. And, and, and so maybe this is a good point. We can transition a little bit into, so you need to come to terms with your own personal family money philosophy. And maybe, you know, we'd have three completely different philosophies. There's, there's one philosophy that's like, look, you always help family, no matter what. Even if, it's, even if they're struggling for dumb reasons and they're irresponsible and whatever, we help family. Maybe, I don't know, Alex, maybe, maybe that's your point of view, right? And, and, and maybe Wade, well, there's you know, something to family, that but... for me. Like I, I, there is something to that for me where I don't care that this person's a, a, a three time loser. You know what? Not yeah. on my watch kind of thing. And it is what it is. And yeah. that's good. And that's bad. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's what you are personally comfortable with. There's another extreme, which I've seen plenty of examples of, um, Hey, we are, yeah, we're related but we're all adults, right? And, and we are responsible for our own financial circumstance. And, you know, uh, it's not that I wish anybody bad luck, but I'm not, you know, my, by the way, this is, we talk about financial planning. This is one of my pet peeves. When most people develop their financial plan, they basically plan for themselves and if they're married for their spouse, but they don't think about any of the other people that are flying around in their orbit close enough to exert influence on their on their path, right? So you never see a financial plan uh, that says, "Hey, um, you know, what about your in laws? If they need long term care, can they pay for it, or is that going to be you?" Right? I mean, who's going to pay for it? Um, and so, as we think about our own financial planning, we need to think about all these other people in our orbit and how we feel about that, right? So, if we're arm's length, we say, "You know what? I don't care if my." You know, if somebody's on the street, that's their problem, not mine. You may think that's harsh. Some people think that way, right? And, and we're not here to judge one approach or another, but you have to recognize what your philosophy is. And I am here to judge, by the way. <laughs> would you judge that's fine. would you judge someone <laughs> harshly? Yes. Well, I know yeah, I'm I'm half kidding, but the reality yeah. is, look, the way I think it's there's a worldview component to this or how you were. Look, my, my parents came to this country from Cuba. Mm -hmm. My mom came here cleaning houses at 15, lost her sense of smell because of the pneumonia, wow. just did away with her nose. Not that that's a trap, but you know what I mean? There was a lot yeah. of stuff baked into yeah. that. My dad got up at four in the morning every day until, you know, he pretty much retired, you know, so yeah. we can have as much as we could. You know, yeah. you know what? Yep. I'm going to make it my business to make sure that uh, they're comfortable. It yeah. is what it is. Now, that's one extreme. But then there's also, let's say, my sister, one of my youngest sisters. She wasn't equipped with the same faculties as her other siblings. And mm -hmm. so to some extent, she yeah. got the short end of the straw with regards to the genetic lottery. And so I do feel compelled to help her, if anything, for because my parents would want that. You know, I'm not saying that because, 
oh, look at me, you know, this or right. that. No, it's just, to me, it's yeah. just the, I'm yeah. breathing air. It's the, the standard thing of what I should do. I don't think I'm going above and beyond. I'm doing what I yeah. should be doing. I don't know that. It's hard for me to divorce that from my yeah, mindset. Well, and so, yeah, I can't just say whatever. Now, I get it. A cousin that I don't see all of a sudden ask me for money, then, you know, whatever. Right. Well, we, what I you're demonstrating, that, you that. you are living and responding to the example that your parents set for you. Your parents yes. did whatever it took for you and you are reflecting that in your family relationships, right? There are other people where, you know, that's just not the case. Um, and, and the other thing that you're bringing up, which is a dimension of understanding your money philosophy with respect to, you know, family uh, matter, financial matters is who's making the request? Because, you know, is it a parent? Is it a sibling? Yeah. Is it a sibling in law? Right. Maybe. Is it a child? Is it a, your own child? Is it a child through marriage? Right. Is it a grandchild? All of those you may have different sort of uh, inclinations towards. And so it's, um, it, it's person dependent. And then secondly, we were hinting around this earlier, you know, what is driving the request? And there's a whole, there's a whole host of reasons. Um, and, you know, maybe the most uh, uh, sympathetic one, let's just say, is, you know, medical emergency, right? Some sort of medical expense. So, you know, someone got diagnosed with cancer, they're battling, the bills are piling up. By the way, they've had to take off work. Now they're, they've lost an income. They're traveling to the special medical center all the time. So their expenses are up. And, you know, that's a case where, you know, but, but you know, but for the grace of God go I, you may be like, okay, you know, uh, I, I really want to help them through this. Um, other triggers, uh, you know, change in marital status, job loss. Um, we talked about, you know, sort of like life improvement, right? I want to go to college. Uh, but then there's also others that you may not feel so sympathetic, you know, just financial mismanagement. Um, that can be short term, that can be, um, making poor decisions that can be uh, retail therapy, you know, yeah, there's a the basic extreme. moral hazard component to it. Yeah. Yeah. It can be addiction too. Right. So there's, you know, addicted to drinking drugs or alcohol or gambling. Oh, so yeah, yeah. there's, it's the person and it's the driver. And by the way, I would say if you are reasonably in touch with your family members, um, you probably know about these before the holidays, right? So, Oh, you know, um, you know, my sister got divorced. I mean, that's not a surprise at Thanksgiving, right? You've heard about it from mom. And so prepare yourself, right? I mean, think the key thing here is think in advance about what, what your position is. And then, then you just execute. Okay. I thought I unplugged that, but okay. That's my, um, that's my sister calling you. That's right. Uh, <laughs> give you some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and it's pretty good. So, um, so the idea <laughs> is think about in advance by individual, by use case. And it's, you know, not to be too much of a grid head uh, though. Yeah. I'm trained as an engineer, you know, you flow it out and, and you, and you, and you think about it and then, and then here's the real kicker. You flow it out and then you sit down with your spouse, <laughs> right? And what does throw it out mean? What do you mean by when you say you throw it out? Sorry. I just want to make sure. People, yeah. Not the money. What, what, what I, what no, I, I know, but I want people to be absolutely clear. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're going we're gonna to go over this in the webinar. It'd be great. We'll get a visual. Uh, but it's basically, you know, the people in your life and the use cases. And you get comfortable with, um, you know, you, you said Alex, right? Like, so, yeah. For, and I feel the same way. For me, none of my family members will ever be, you know, on the street, no matter what. Right. So that's, that's sort of like a rule for me. Now, if my brother uh, became addicted to gambling or some other vice, no, yeah, I don't know. Would I, how far would There's I go? There's different I mean, dynamics. Cause now, yeah. When, when you're talking about addictions that are beyond them as a person, right? It, it, it's, it's beyond just simply lending money. It's, it's right. hardcore intervention. So uh, that's, that's right. I think that's beyond the purview of just, Hey, give me 50 bucks so I can like, whatever. Yeah. Right. Or, <laughs> or you might say, you know what? I've got as much money as you need to get back on your feet after 
you, you know, you go through the treatment program or whatever, right? So, so th this is interesting. So, so just to, uh, so, okay. I, what I've heard is context makes a huge difference. You need to do your, your mental calculation of what context makes sense for you so that you're not seen as the sucker, but you're seen as somebody that can actually provide help, but in the teaching them to fish sort of category, yeah. if you will. And yeah. so you're going to discuss that specifically in the, the webinar, just from a timing yeah. perspective. So once you've decided in your brain that, okay, this is probably leaning towards no, how do I get out of this in the nicest way possible without right. ruining my dessert yeah. or those like marshmallow <laughs> rice krispies that I don't want to feel guilty about when I'm eating them? You know, that, that kind of, how do you? Yeah. So, so um, one is, okay, so I'm going to answer that in two ways. One is a, a very direct, like we, we can practice, you know, you can ask me for money and I'm going to respond. But before we get there, I want to just cover one other thing, which is, you know, yeah. people are asking for money. That may not be the most valuable thing to give them in every case. Right. And so, um, you know, if you have done well financially, you probably understand kind of more or less budgeting investment, you know, maybe a, a more powerful form of assistance is not simply writing a check. It's saying, hey, you know what? Um, grandson, whoever, whatever, you know, let's sit down. Um, let's go through your whole financial situation. Let's figure it out. And I'll spend some time and I'll share with you what I know about whatever, about budgeting and investing and all that kind of stuff. Um, so there are other forms of assistance, not just giving somebody cash that um, might allow for a better outcome, right? And so... Uh, and, 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 you know, that also then will raise the bar for others. Like, oh, you know, yeah, he didn't just write me a check. I had to kind of like open up and, you know, we really got in, got into uh, my financial situation. So um, there's that. There's also, you know, why are they asking you? Are there other sources of money? Um, you know, they've got some money in a 401k. You could take a restricted loan or, you know, they have some restricted assets like a 401k or 403b, you know, take a loan against it. You could do a hardship withdrawal. Um, you can take a withdrawal and pay the tax penalties. Um, whole host, maybe of less liquid assets, right? Uh, you've got a home. Do you have any uh, mortgage? Could you downsize and rent, right? There may be other sources of money that can address um, some of the immediate financial challenges. Um, but the, you know, let me get to what you were uh, asking, I think, Alex, which is like, how do I, like, literally, what do I say, right? Um, so, Alex, uh, yeah, we just uh, we just finished our third glass of Chardonnay and the turkey was great. And I'm getting up and you kind of corner me, uh, you know, in the family room or whatever and fire away. Ask me for money. Hey, Dan, great seeing you today. This is awesome. Great seeing you, Alex. Nice. By the way, I can't say I can't tell you how good you look. How much weight have you lost? <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, I'm uh, I'm following the X Y Z diet. <laughs> thank you. Nice. Hey, did I tell you I was reading The Alchemist about some young shepherd boy and his pursuit to follow his dreams, mm. and and that 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 book really influenced me. And I think I saw it one day in your bookcase behind you when we had like this this meeting that that we were having. And I, did you like that book? What did you think about that kid achieving his yeah. goals no matter what? <laughs> I mean, I think it's a beautiful fable. <laughs> fable. But how can we make that a reality? I have an idea, Dan. <laughs> I have an idea. Plastics. No, no. Data storage. <laughs> you know about AI, right? We need yeah, to store it's... all of that computing power somewhere. Well, and AI you know what? Future. Data storage is the place to be right now. <laughs> No, uh, let me, let me be sure. Hey, Dan. Uh, hey, how you doing? Hey, I wanted to touch base with you about something. And it's, it's a little embarrassing, but the reality is I don't know who else to ask. And I, I, I heard that on occasion you're able to help out family members when needed. And I, I just, you know, I, I, I go to work. I'm working. I'm getting my life mm -hmm. back on track. I know between college and getting my first job, it took me a while. But here I am. I've matured. I feel really good about it but my car broke down and I can't get mm. to work. Mm. And uh, I live 45 minutes away and there's no bus or anything like that. I've looked at all public transportation and there really isn't anything that, that is practical for me to take. Plus the shift ends at 1230 and 
it, it just makes it tough at night to come back. And I was wondering if you could lend me $750 so I can get this fixed. And I'm probably have a surplus of, let's say, 70 bucks every two weeks. And I can pay you out like that. What do you say? Okay. All right. So, so first I go back to my money rules, right? And I've got to decide. And just for this example, let's just say I'm one of those people that I'm not going to give money to anybody, right? So I can respond the following way. I could say, oh, gosh, you know, I'm so sorry, Alex. I'm really sorry to hear that. But I don't think that's something I can do right now. Okay, so that's sort of like a sort of soft way of saying no. But when I say that. Well, Dan, remember that WhatsApp chat group that we're in? What's that? With a bunch of guys. Remember that WhatsApp chat group that we're in? No, never mind. Go on. (laughs) Right, right. No, so, so, uh, you know, first of all, so I say, I'm so sorry, Alex. I don't think that's something I can do right now. What are the, what, as a recipient, and Wade, you can chime in too, like, what are you hearing from that? The timing's not right, but Wade, what are you hearing from that? Right. Well, yeah, just a politely to say no. I yeah. I, I think there's a few things. So, I mean, so the timing different. is a good one, right? So I can't do that right now. So you think, well, maybe you can do it in the future, right? I haven't really shut the door. I say, Fair I'm enough. so sorry, right? What does that say? That means I'm saying, well, I'd really like to, dot, 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 but I don't think I can. I don't think you, you know, I don't think I can. Well, maybe you can. I'm, I'm not sure that I can't, right? Um, that's, you know, so it makes it sound like it's more of a, more of a, um, it's like a weak close. close. It's a very weak close. All right, so now ask me for money another time. You don't have to do the whole preamble, but just go to the punch. <laughs> hey, hey, Dan, I need $750. What do you say? No. Okay, thank you. Right? And you just you just say, you know, if, if you feel strongly enough, that's the answer. You don't need to justify it. Um, by the way, you know, if you've got, you know, $10 million in the bank, you say, oh, I can't, you know, I just can't swing that. They're like, you know, freaking liar. You know, of course you can. Right. So oftentimes the simplest, most direct answer is just no. I I got a question for you and you may know this. I I get the sense that people, when they start asking like that, don't really care what your reason is. They just want to know, is it yes or no? Do I get the money now? Because I got, I got 10 other people here to ask. And so you're number three and and I've got an hour left before I got to head back. No, I'm, I'm exaggerating. But I think there's some truth to that where it's transactional and they're not going to be overly hurt by that. They just want to know, yes, no, okay, next. At least not when it's like your sibling or something like that. If it's like a person that you just see a few times a year, I think that's totally valid because they're just being transactional. But that's just me saying that. Is that that a thing or no? Not really. You know, um, it's not something that I've done actual research on. But I think if I were to sort of intuit I would say you're more, you are largely correct, right? That it's not about you, it's about them. um, And it's about them solving their immediate financial need. And so, you know, your maybe sob story or whatever, it's, yeah, I mean. Yeah, three months from now, they're just going to know you said no, and that's it. Right, right, right. Um, Now, there are some ways, though, that, you know, so let's say you want to have this sort of, pretty hard rule that you don't give money to family members. Um, You say no, but there are some sort of sneaky ways to give money, right? So, so maybe at Christmas, instead of getting them a, you know, whatever your gift is, you know, a $50 gift for, or a $20 gift or a hundred dollar gift, you do 10 X, right? So, okay. And, and, and the signal there is I heard you, I want to help you out. Don't expect this on a regular basis, right? That this is a one-time you know, extra big gift for you. And it's sort of in a loving way, uh, no strings attached. Uh, but yeah, the Christmas miracle. So, so there's, there's sort of like side sideways into this so that you're not really establishing a, a precedent. It's a little, con, you know, it's a, it's a little uh, uh, convoluted. And then they ask you the same thing every two weeks before Christmas. Right, 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 right. Well, that's when you become the ATM. Then you're no longer a banker. Then you're the ATM. <laughs> You know, but it, okay. Are there any other ways to hold your ground, 
Or are there any ways to say yes and say that's it or that doesn't yeah. work? No, it can work. It, it absolutely can, right? So I'm willing to do this. This is the only time I'm going to do it. So, uh, you know, you, you could say something like this. Um, I, you know, I have decided I'm going to help family members, you know, uh, once, but I'm not going to make a habit of it. So if this is the time you want the financial assistance, you feel, you know, then I'm happy to do it. And so you know, you're like a hall pass. Exactly. Right. You, you've used it up. You know, that's it. Um, oh, there's, right. yeah. So, so, so that's another, there's one other thing I, I uh, started to start on. I just want to make sure I bring this out because it's super important. Um, you may have your point of view, but, and, and maybe Alex, you know, maybe your wife and I, your wife and uh, you being wired differently, you might see things differently. You've got to be on the same page with your spouse because just like kids know how to play one parent off the other, um, people looking for money, uh, you know, they might ask me if I say no, they'll hit up my wife. And, you know, my wife is very generous, very giving, you know, you need to be on the same page. Right. And so your, it's not that you have one set of money rule, rules and your wife does. I mean, unless you have completely separate accounts and, you know, you're, you're a very super. No, we're couple. pretty together like yeah. that. And. Yeah. Even though it's a different cult, I, I think the family thing is a strong between both of oh, us. That's so yeah, that's interesting. You might both have, yeah, similarities that way. But in some cases, it, the, you know, the expectations might be different because huge resentments can come up if it's like, oh, you know, why are we always giving your brother-in-law, yeah, you yeah. know, money? And, you know, I don't give money to my sister, you know, or that's a fair point. Laws or whatever. Yeah. So you just got to be clear as a couple you know, what, uh, what the rules are and, and, and be good with them. So I've got, and, and but we're going to get in, you're going to get into the details of this in a upcoming webinar. Correct. Okay. And we'll have that, those links in the show notes uh, for those listening to you after the webinar is over. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's going to be great. Uh, that being the case, I, I do have one, one question, Dan, sure. I, I know we're kind of at, at time here, but Let's say you have a friend and you and him do a podcast. How would you ask that person for money in a manner that they would say yes? <laughs> no, I, no. I better trade gently here. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Wait, yeah, yeah. Who are you uh, asking? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm wait, waiting for Wade to hit me I'm up, man. Me that guy's nonstop, like nonstop. Guys. Look at his wardrobe. He stopped buying those shirts. He's coming after me now. <laughs> Get a direct connection to the gap. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uni he's more of a Uniqlo guy now, so it's like a whole new wardrobe for Wade. Uh, all right. I, have, I got most of my clothes for years. Where? Uniqlo. Oh, the Japanese. Oh, yeah, because of Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. All right, That's Dan, cool. this, was, this was great, man. I, I appreciate it so much. Uh, Wade, you want to parting thoughts? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. And for everyone listening, who's listening closer to real time, who would like to learn more, uh, to have the opportunity to attend that webinar with you. It's called The Holiday Season, Making Memories and Awkward Money Moments. It'll be on Tuesday, November 19th, 2024, uh, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern time. As Alex mentioned, a link to that is in the show notes. And if you're listening, uh, it's a fairly easy URL that you can sign up with. We've got it set up at resaprofile.com slash podcast. And I guess if you're close to real time with this, you'll be able to see the registration link there. So thank you so much, Dan. And we're looking forward to seeing you again with the webinar next week. And Excellent. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, everyone. Take oh, care. of course. My pleasure. And thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll catch you next time. And we'll be back with our tax planning arc next time on Retire With Style.